man. Hey, What's man. good with y'all, man? It's your boy, Henny the Moore, reporting live from the liquor store. And you do see two other faces on here with me, man. So when you see West Coast Cowboy, you see Landlord from Alabama, you see Henny the Moore, you know that it's Cowboys Uncut. The most, the most unfiltered, unadulterated, unsaturated, <laughs> real deal, uncut uh, cowboy show in the nation, Craig. So, hey, and we're going to bring it to you like nobody else brings it to you, man. We're going to talk about a little bit of everything. Folks back in the lab in the off season, uh, folks up here talking about. Yo, mama, if you, if you get out of line, let's just be real. Yo, mama, if you get out of line. You granted, too. Because I ain't your, gran <laughs> and your granny with a bow leg. She cooked like a mother, but you know she bow leg. That and we're gonna talk about you know just just everything going on, man. That's, Yo, that's that ass uncle. <laughs> hey, but for real, there's a bunch of shit going on in Cowboys Nation, and we're gonna cover a little bit of everything. Y'all know we don't usually stay on topic for worth a damn, but it always be entertaining. So bear with us. We're gonna bring y'all some premium uncut cowboys content. Uh, but real quick before we do this, I ain't gonna give a long intro introduction because I ain't did a show. In a couple in a couple of days, I've been away on a business trip. But uh, shout out to everybody in the chat box: Elijah Robinson, Da Lee, Desmond Ironman, aka Tony Stark, uh, my boy Danny Savage, the draft guru in the building. What's up with you, my guy? Oh, uh, let's see who else in the building, man. Uh, yeah, hey, that fit. Hey, Regina Green with the green and tapped in. Cause hey, that's Mister Cowboys Nation, Imp Sports, my boy Kevin Boo. Justin Kitchen helping us practice manifestation and a hey, y'all know to hit the like button on everybody page y'all know hit the share button on everybody page y'all know to hit the cash app or the super chat on everybody page you know everybody out here pushes uh pushing content uh everybody has memberships everybody has raffles so if you want to support and help keep the lights on uh everybody cash app is at the bottom everybody on here is monetized and can't receive super chats and listen y'all ask I went and added a Venmo. I went and added a PayPal. If you want to donate to the show, you can do whatever way floats your boat. Uh, I might have to follow suit on that. He ain't got For real. Venmo, I, oh, I got man. those. I don't know I got those. Man, because listen, they were like, hey, man, you got Venmo? You got PayPal? Hey. I ain't got I, no excuse now. Hey, like, I'm just saying, man. <laughs> like, if, if you ask, you shall receive in the liquor store, man. So, hey, salute to everybody. Uh, make sure that y'all like, share. Uh, Bitch, you ain't got EBT. Yes. Do you take EBT? Let's yeah, get that out the way Listen, right now. Let's I, get that out the way. Hey, I can't. I can't legally say that on the show, but <laughs> you know, if you want, if you hit, want hit to my meet line. me, hit my if, line. You, if you want to meet me at the store, and you know, some some ex some exchanges or something something happen, you know, like we can we can talk about it. Hey, I'm gonna tell you like this. I know a liquor store right now where you can buy cigarettes with EBT. We'll figure it out. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I bought Very eleven dollars worth of worth of chicken. You didn't. <laughs> Very nefarious activity. Yeah. They'd be scared in that same bag of chicken. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, and we'll take some Easter bags, uh, baskets today, man. You know, it's the day before Good Friday, the day before, uh, you know. So yeah, yeah, we'll Boy, take Easter I'm baskets. I'm talking nefariously. Does that mean eggs, sir? Are you saying the eggs? Hey, you know he, a, you know he, a, he, a, he's a culinary. He's a master of the, of the, of the spoon, the fork, and the knife. You know that, right? Oh, the, mm. the culinary arts. I did not know. Yeah, he, a, he's a master of the, the spoon, fork, and knife. So, so he you talking know, he eggs would, on the low. Okay. Yeah, he might be talking about some crazy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, hey, I'm gonna tell you when I was in Dallas, and I still have not. This might be something simple to y'all, but they don't do this. I saw somebody cook barbecue wings on an open grill and they did not stick i was pretty impressed i'm not gonna lie really but yeah. the, um, the grill or something i don't know on the open they, grill they, they might have used they, they might have used that onion see man why you always gotta mess stuff up man see 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 that's what they use they use the onion that's what they do they might have used the onion man okay 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 so if, you, if you hit it with, if you hit it with the onion you man, i ain't gonna give y'all everything See, that's I'm, I'm, see how he gonna give it, but he ain't gonna really give it though. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he like, I'ma give it, but I'ma take it back. Yeah, oh, Indian give it ass. You know what I'm saying? You just like Jerry Jones. You give it and you take it back. You know what I'm saying? You remind see, me of Jerry Jones. See, my boy Marvin that came through with everything, man. Yeah, my said, boy that everybody don't know about, about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. See, he been he been in California too damn long, man. He ain't country enough. 
I just, I'm just saying, I was impressed. He done, he done evolved from Arkansas nigga. Listen to me. I'm going to just say this. When he went to flip the chicken and the chicken didn't stay, I was impressed. Because I was like, oh, yeah, that. I'm like, there go the skin. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Whoa. What did I that's, just see? That's different. <laughs> that's different, right, though. That's Yo, different. You know what I'm saying? That's different. He said, hey, shout out to Numb Hand Neil. Uh, he, my boy said, what's up, gents? Slapped up Stephen Jones, nine to four time before checking in, man. Mm -mm. Is he still? Did he have any signs of life after that? That's what I want to know. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna tell you this right now, Stephen Jones. You you put your hands on Stephen Jones, you are gonna wake up at two o'clock in the morning with a. With, I ain't even gonna say no homo, but you are gonna have a burl in your mouth, and it might be two of them, and it might have a dude with the end and got a click click on it. Cause I ain't gonna lie, I feel like Stephen Jones gonna get his get back. I just feel like Jerry Jones, he may hit you with the oh you're my grandson, I love you so much. But I feel like you put your hands on Stephen Jones. I feel like Stephen Jones gonna get with you, bro. I feel like an older black man with 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 very small facial impressions, with small hair, with a big old double barrel gonna come see you in the middle of the night. That's just what I'm saying. Because Stephen Jones, he get his get back. <laughs> he did his get back. No diddy. Very nefarious. Very nefarious, man. But man, <laughs> where do y'all want to start, man? Where do y'all want to start today? Y'all want to start? Good, I got a good. I got a good one. What's that? Shador Sanders and Dak Prescott. Hell, you mean? Let's talk about that. You got my boy Law Nation made a nine minute and forty three minute video on it. I watched all four nine. I watched all nine minutes of it too. Shout out to my boy Law Nation. Salute to Law, man. Um, I didn't agree with all of it. I ain't agree with all of it, but I like the effort. A couple of things he did say that I agree with was I do believe that Dion. I do believe that what Law said in his video is this is true. When you draft. Shador Sanders, you are drafting everybody that has Sanders on the back of their jersey. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I did agree with because Deion Sanders isn't, he has been very instrumental, instrumental in his son's life, right? Where, you know, that, and I'm a different, I'm gonna tell you, like, I'm curious to know how far that goes in the NFL. You mean, you always need your daddy. Don't get me wrong. I ain't gonna say you don't need your daddy. But your agent is going to play a large portion in your life, too. You know what I'm saying? Your agent is a huge person in your life when you become professional. So mm -hmm. I'm curious if teams are willing to deal with, with Shador and Dion. Because remember, teams didn't want to deal with LaMelo and his daddy. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. you know, we are only – and I'm going to tell you all, I can say this because I am one. Mm -hmm. Only black daddies – who overprotect their sons get looked at as that being something wrong. That's all I'm saying. And, I, and I'm just saying that because I'm a black daddy. If I wasn't black daddy, I, if I was a Hispanic daddy, I might be able to say it differently. But I'm just saying, they tend to, that tends to get viewed as something not right. You know what I'm saying? So even if we were able to get him, who cares if we're not able to, if we're not, if, if we were physically able to acquire him on that aspect alone, man, I don't know if Stephen Jones would want to deal. I don't think Jerry Jones may deal with him, but I feel like Stephen Jones is not dealing with Deion Sanders. He didn't even want Deion Sanders on this team when we won a championship. Yep. So it's like, that's my thoughts on it, opening thoughts on it. I mean, you pretty much said everything that needed to be said on the topic because Deion Sanders, what people don't really understand, Deion Sanders spent just as much time in Dallas as he did in Atlanta, and this man is not in the ring of honor. He, was, he won a Super Bowl, helped Dallas win their last Super Bowl, uh, did a bunch of great things while he was in Dallas, multi-time All-Pro, multi-time Pro Bowler, one, one of the best players the Dallas Cowboys have ever had, played half a decade here. He's not in the ring of honor. Don't play, they? Play DB and wide receiver. Hey, DB, and listen, wide receiver, and kick returner. So, no, the Dallas Cowboys don't show Deion Sanders love like that for me to believe that uh, it's just going to be hunky-dory if they were to get uh, his, his son. And like you also mentioned, Shadour is probably looked at as as the as as quarterback one or quarterback two coming out of this this upcoming draft class, and Dak Prescott's on the team this year, meaning you're going to at least be not nine and eight. Dak Prescott doesn't have a losing season, so the fact that they don't they probably ain't going to gravitate toward Dion, and the fact he probably won't be available for the Dallas Cowboys both play a part in it. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell y'all something that you guys don't understand too. When you're in the NFL, there is no recruiting. There's mm -hmm. paying people. 
Like, listen to me. You can get online and, and beg someone to come to your team all day. If your team, if that team that you're on is not going to pay me, all you are is a friend that's asking me to come play with you. But this ain't college, bro. There is an advantage. Like, <clears throat> People always want to say that, like, they always bring up, you know, I, I think every time there's a free agent, I'm pretty sure all their homies are asking them, hey, come play with us, come play with us. But if you know that team's not going to pay you, why would you want to exist? And I'm going to be honest with you, if Dion is as smart as I know he is, like, think about this. Dion opened up a high school for his kids. Then when they left high school, guess what Dion did? He yes. left and went to college, right? Dion is always looking toward the future. Deion Sanders, I'm going to ask you this right now. Do you want your sons doing business with Jerry Jones? Probably not. Landlord, what's your thoughts on it, man? I really don't view it like it's something that's really going to happen, so it's hard for me to even take it really serious. Facts. So, like, Facts. I, I, I Facts. ain't going to lie. Like, you know, y'all can talk about it, but I'm over here like, you know. It's, it's hard for you to get up for it. It's yeah, hard for you to get up for it. It's not real. It's, it's not a real thing. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's, it's a talking point. I mean, it's a discussion maybe, but I just don't see it being something that we'll do. And then one for one, okay, let's say Shador do come to the Cowboys. Like, you think the Joneses want to deal with all that stuff that come with Deion Sanders and his, and his stuff? Like, no. Deion and them going to want to dictate. Jerry and them don't play that. They're not gonna play that. So Dion's gonna want to be sitting by the owner every game. He wanna, he wanna dictate. Like we love mm -hmm. Dion. Like what? What y'all think Dion consider himself as? Do he consider himself as a cowboy or a, or a niner? I think he only played a year with the 49ers. I yeah. think Dion kind of gave. He's he's pretty much to the point where he's just like neutral. He's football. He's everybody Dion. wants Dion. Yeah, you're like you know pops. But everybody in football, like in a football sense, <laughs> they want a part of. Dion Sanders. You see what I'm saying? So I don't mm -hmm. think he actually belongs to no team. He's just Dion. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He's almost Deion like Sanders. LeBron. So the Joneses probably feel the same way as well. They like, eh, we love you, but you ain't really no cowboy like that. You know what I'm saying? Like to, to that degree, that's why they probably disrespect him in that manner. Because look, one thing that'll never ever happen and it'll never be possible ever. Nobody will ever be able to walk through the Dallas Cowboys door and challenge that brand. Because Shador and them, they a brand. They, yep. they up there saying all kind of stuff. Like, and they well, growing. I ain't gonna lie. It was church when them boys came in there uh, when I first heard them in the interview. I was like, man, they talking like this? <laughs> I couldn't they believe. They are well coached, bro. They are believe. well coached. I couldn't believe they was talking like that. Them boys was like, yeah, they hate to see a young black man doing this and that. I'm like, hold on now. Wait a minute. I don't know if y'all can do that. <laughs> y'all need to simmer down. So, Dallas, yeah, when I look at them doing that, it's like I just don't see that brand being able to merge with the brand. Like, no, you they want to they want they brand to be prioritized. Why you yep. think Dion go somewhere like Colorado? Like <clears throat> he is Colorado now. Colorado was nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. no disrespect to the school, but you know what I mean? Like, they was not on the radar of nobody. Same so, with Jackson State. Of course. So he is the brand. When you think about Colorado, what do you think about? Dion. Yeah, Dion. 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 You don't even think about the team. You're thinking you, about him. You don't even think about them team that won championships in Colorado. So do you think Dion or Jerry is going to allow Dion to come over here and challenge his brand? Let's no. get real, bro. Let's get real. Like, and that's listen, why I can't, I can't entertain that, man. And listen, the person... Let's let's say that he is the number one overall pick next year. How bad would you have to be to be the number one overall pick? Because the Panthers had the number one overall pick this year, technically, and it it belonged to somebody else due to a trade. So they only won one game last year. Are the Dallas Cowboys going to be one game bad next year with Dak Prescott, Ceedee Lamb, Michael Parsons, uh, all them different dudes out there? No. They're no, gonna, they're gonna win more than one one damn game, so you're never they're not even gonna even be in a position to get to get a Shador Sanders. Shador gonna end up with one of these extra sorry ass teams. So what, hey, what, what, me, I didn't watch a lot of video, so I don't want to take it out of context. What? How did we acquire him? 
Like what was no, that? Honestly, was, I'm gonna keep it real with you. He didn't even he didn't he didn't even and I'm and I love the fact that he didn't he didn't he didn't do that. He didn't even really address the fact of how the well basically said you would have to give up your whole you would have to give up everything to get him. You know what I'm saying? Because you're gonna have, you have to, to come up. up. Okay. You have to trade up to get him, right? right? So I mean that's that because I mean there isn't any and I love the fact that law didn't try to like come up with this mathematical equation on getting because there's really it's really simple. You either lose all your games this year. Or you give up everything that you have because to get into the top five, because you got to think like this, Dak Prescott is going to be good enough, like Kenny said, to get you 10 wins, 12 wins, right? That alone is going to get you in the playoffs by e putting you pick 22 and out. That means any quarterback that you pick after the 22nd is probably going to be like the third or fourth quarterback off the board. And that probably means that they're rebel. They're probably, and I, let's just be real. Most start, most first round pick quarterbacks aren't even ready to play. They're put into position to play. Now think about this. What would be the expectations of Shador Sanders in his first year? Even if you just acquired him and got him, what would be the expectations? The expectations would be for him to be um, top five in offensive and offensive completions. You would want him to be top five in touchdowns. Rookie of the year. You want him to be. Hold up. You would want him to be top five in least interceptions thrown. And by doing that, think about this: he would naturally win rookie of the year, and he would naturally be an MVP candidate. Guess what? You have that right now. I was just about to say. So you're basically to going to draft. And think about this. You want Shador to be what you don't think Dak is good enough in year eight. I'm going to tell you this right now. To think that Shador can be as good as Dak. Think, I would just listen to me. I would just want to know, can Shador be as good as the boy in Houston? I was just about to piggyback on what you said, but I you really pretty much answered my question because I was about to say you asked what are we expecting from him, and I would rebuttal and say what are we giving up for him? You know what I'm saying? Like that right there tells us what we expect from him. You see what I'm saying? Like if we go out here and fumble the bag and lose every game, which will never happen, um, outside of a dramatic, terrible, catastrophic type of injury from somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? That's what I'm saying. Like, what would we have to give up to acquire him? And then once I hear that price, that would let me know what we expecting from this young man. And I don't think he can he can deliver. You know what I'm saying? I just don't. Not with this team. Not, not year one. No, absolutely and, not. And then think about this, landlord. People be like, well, Shador, he's a great quarterback, but he just don't have an offensive line and he don't have weapons. I'm like, well, think about this. If he's drafted in the top five, He's gonna be on a team that probably doesn't have a good offensive line and probably doesn't have good weapons. That's the reason they're a top pick. And I'm thinking to myself, like Cowboys, like what what are you trying? What is your ultimate goal for this year and next year? Because if your ultimate goal is to be competitive, you're why are you talking about? Getting a rookie quarterback. Most quarterbacks, rookie, are not competitive. Mm -hmm. A needle in a haystack. Like everybody. And think thinks, about this. And think about this. Even if there's gonna be an automatic deck or an automatic CJ Stroud, that don't really happen as much. And then landlord, think about this. People be like, yeah, but you can still be the kid from Houston. But think about this. There was other quarterbacks drafted last year. Mm -hmm. Who's yeah, the same you got the one? Yeah. Your boy. That's your man, guy. That, that, nah, that's your guy over there, man. I just don't get y'all, man. Do y'all want to meddle me because he's from Bama, bro? Yeah. bro you take everything positive and negative when it comes to Alabama. That's he, your kid. He if you listen to me, nothing, landlord, when your kids are standing up there getting Oscars, you get to cry. When they standing behind the bars <laughs> talking about, Daddy, I need you to bond me out, you get to cry. <laughs> hey, just, that's like, your child. On the streets. What, what we just said. The best Either way, that's your play. child. The best player go to what? The worst team. What is Carolina? The worst Terrible. team. They are bad. They are even a bad organization. So, like, let's not just talk about the team. So you just think Bryce supposed to just be the white out eraser to just come whoosh, 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 fix everything. Chill out, man. Relax. I'm going to just tell you like this. Shador Sanders is a more of a pocket quarterback. So that means he's going to probably need a better line than Dak. And he's probably going to need weapons. 
Because people think since Shador's black that he runs. That's not his game. Shador Sanders was coached and mentored by Tom, by Tom Brady. Brady. By Tom Brady. Dion didn't Dion didn't let Michael Vick mentor his son. He didn't let Joe Montana mentor his son. Tom uh, uh, Troy Aikman. I mean, he said no, 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 Trump, no. Steve Michael Young. Vick, the one you're Steve about Young about you know what I'm saying? He's not. You know, he had Tom Brady in his life. Now, I love the aspiration, but what I'm saying is this. If you're telling me Dak is going to have a worse offensive line and worse weapons, how do you feel that that's going to be an era for success? Okay, can we please talk about something else? Because this ain't even real, bro. I'm sorry. Yes, let's go. Next subject. Next right. um, Dak Prescott. Let's, F it. let's talk about Dak Prescott. All right, so some people are saying this could be the last year in Dallas. For one rain Dakota Prescott. I'm going to lead out with this because I want people to understand what that actually looks like financially for people. Because people keep telling me, oh man, the Dallas Cowboys got this much cap space uh, in 2025. It doesn't even matter about the 40 million. Shit. All right, let me tell y'all something. First and foremost, if that Prescott ups and walks, if no contract is, is done, he is a free agent, contract expires, voids out. The Dallas Cowboys will be on the hook for $40 million in 2025. It was 36, but they restructured and moved a little bit of that cap hit towards next year. So why would we have to pay Dak Prescott $40 million next year? Because of the voided years. When a contract voids out, this ain't the one, when a contract voids out, right, every voided year will have to be paid that season it doesn't Damn. matter if, if you have seven void years on the back of the contract it doesn't matter if you have two every Damn. cap hit associated with a voided year will have to be paid that year so you want to know why what? you want to know why because they want to make voided. sure they want to make yes voided but they also want to make sure i promise you the players union was the one that makes sure that that was in there because they want to make sure two years from now you don't make a bunch of dumb decisions and you're like i can't pay you Mm -hmm. So you know, so yeah, you get the money up front. So you'll be in the hole for forty million dollars on Dak Prescott in twenty twenty five. And but folks look, will look at the numbers right now. Well, Henny, this eighty million dollars, uh, this eighty million dollars available in twenty twenty five with the dead cap hit. But you're also forgetting half your team is not under contract in twenty twenty five. It does not account that CD Lamb is not CD Lamb is not under contract in twenty twenty five. So you either got to tag him or give him an extension. Zach Martin is not un under contract in twenty twenty five, so it doesn't factor in his money. Also, Diggy Zua is a free agent. It doesn't it does not factor in his money. If you were to give Michael Parsons an extension, it does not factor in that money. If you like, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of, of factors. Then hey, also gotta, does not I also, a, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I gotta take a call real quick. All right. It also does not factor in the fact that you have not paid your free your uh, draft class from this year, nor will it factor in the draft class for next year. So folks talking about there's a bunch of money. No, your team is a shell in 2025. Ain't no you got 80 million dollars because ain't nobody paid. Thanks. So no, it, it still is going to hurt you. It's, it's still going to hurt you having forty million dollars of dead money for a dude that's not even on your team. And then guess what? You need a damn quarterback, so you got to pay the damn quarterback that you bring in. Facts. So this is all I'm saying. Like it's not just going to be this clean break from Dak Prescott. It's not, and we should know better by now. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not even entertaining a lot of that stuff, man. Like I really feel like. It could be, but I strongly feel like it shouldn't be. So I'm going to just act like it's, it's make-believe until they, they really do it. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got to play it. Because, look, if we want to start over, it's really discouraging. Like, listen, this is why I, I drastically don't want it to happen. This year would be for nothing. Like, it, it, would, it wouldn't matter at all. It wouldn't. Like, if you're not going to get a man a fighting chance, you're not going to get a coach a fighting chance. If you're not going to get him a formidable team to actually suit up and try to win, what are we really doing here? You see what I'm saying? Are you going to just sabotage them every turn, every corner? You got your head coach on your head coach is on a one year what? deal. That's not worth it. 
your head coach is on a one-year deal. Theoretically, your defensive coordinator is on a one-year deal. Your quarterback, starting quarterbacks on a one-year deal. And your starting wide receivers all on a one-year deal. That's your and offense. He, and all of them people supposed to trust the front office and try to play for them next year. Oh, Richard, that's what you forgot. Trey Lance needs a contract in 2025 as well. So you either had to pick up Trey Lance's fifth-year option or give him a contract. So, no, 2025, you have to either pay Trey Lance or pick up his fifth-year deal. So hey, I, Trey Lance is not is not under contract in 2025. Hey, Chris, I ain't, I'm going to keep it one a buck with you, my boy. Uh, you literally read my You That's exactly how I feel. I feel like the Cowboys are going to get a deal with Dak because I ain't going to lie. I feel like this, my boy. Chris, I'm going to tell you, my boy. I feel like this whole – we just going to go through the season. Ain't nobody heard Dak's thoughts on it, right? Ain't mm -hmm. nobody that like, like, what if they just said that? Like, you know how, like, when you break up with a girl and then she go tell the whole world, oh, he was, there's only three things, a girl, it's only a few things. You either gay, you dig Lano, or you gave her <laughs> you dig. You know what I'm saying? It's always one of them three things. You feel me? So she out here telling the world about you. Ain't nobody heard your side of the story. You want to know why? Because you up here keeping it player. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep my mouth closed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I ain't talking about it, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let them talk. So guess what? Everybody believes what? What's being heard. Because guess what? We as men also know that sometimes defending a lie only validates it. You know what I'm saying? So if that come out and be like, no, I didn't say that, then they'd be like, okay, well, what did you say? <laughs> why you think what Jay said? A wise man told me, "Yeah, people from a distance can't tell, can't who, is tell who is who." You don't want to be caught up in that foolishness, sir. So sometimes the best scenario, like think about this: all the crap that they said about Hold Zeke. On. Quit playing. What did action. Zeke ever say back? Zeke never said nothing back. Action, you and, better be playing. And guess what happened? Zeke ended up getting paid. Listen to me. I still think there's a good chance. Hold on, let me let me try to verify some shit real quick. Action bro. better quit playing, bro. Listen to me. You're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get sat down for a couple a little bit for a couple minutes. Too you... emotional right now to be playing. Yeah, you, you gonna Don't get... do that. Hold on. Hey, my boy said 95% of West Coast's football related references are about relationships. You wanna know why? You know why? Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs. You can't say digs in a no, no, no. That's not acceptable. You a troll. <laughs> You're trolling. How you gonna say digs in the cowboy chat and don't spend? Hey, listen to me. I'm a, listen to me. That's on behalf of Action Powell. On, on behalf of Action Powell. On behalf of Action Powell and West Coast Cow Cowboy in our content. We would like to apologize for that. All right, Action. <laughs> we, we, hey, 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 Action. Look at me in my face. I owe you one more favor, and then we even. Okay, I go your one. You just use one. That was crazy. You I almost got off the. I almost got off the live right now, bro. Far too nefarious. I was gonna be in. And I'm gonna tell you, Action Pal, <laughs> you one of them dudes that when you put stuff in the comment box, whether I agree with you or disagree with you, I put validity in what you say. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just be like, now now I didn't look out for you. Now I'm low-key mad. <laughs> Don't do that no more, bro. Look at you know, Henny. I was going to be in my feelings, boy. Henny looking, Henny looking like too many kids that came in the liquor store with backpacks. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Man, hurry up, I was going to be in shambles on here, boy. Hey, look at Henny. Henny came in them backpacks. <laughs> look. <laughs> so, man, I was so on X. I'm like, I went straight to Twitter like, wait a minute. Hold on. Hey, I'm over here doing my paid in full. Remember, I'm paid in full with, with hey, hit that blunt. Like, <laughs> you know what's crazy, bro? Nothing really. I'm like Dak now. Nothing surprises me, bro. Not a damn thing. And I'm going to keep it real with you. I think some of these Cowboy players, I think they do be a little too, too, too loyal to the star, bro. Because think about this. The guys who have been like, man, F the Cowboys paid me, got paid, bro. And that's why I'm telling you right now, Dak, if you do this good old boy crap, and that's, listen to me, that's why last week I was on a show, I forget whose show I was on, I was on the final word, and I said this, bruh, Dak, you need to tell me, do you want to be a cowboy or not? Because if you want to be a Dallas cowboy, I want to know why are you not holding out? Because holding out, you know what that guarantees? That guarantees that you get paid and you're a Dallas cowboy. Why? Because, bruh, we're going to go in training camp 
And guess what? You're going to see the exact same thing that they saw when Cooper that year that Dak Prescott couldn't be in training camp and they had Cooper Rush out there and CeeDee Lamb was looking bad. And they was all talking about, yeah, man, you know, Dak, Dak, this, Dak, that, Dak, that. So I'm going to tell you, listen to me. CeeDee Lamb is in a major contract here if he does not get paid. Do you think he wants Trey Lance throwing him the ball? No. There's no way in no. hell he wants to put a – listen, and if I'm C.D. Lamb, if that – bro, if I'm C.D. Lamb right now, he's the person that nobody's talking about. And if I'm C.D. Lamb, I'm calling up Dak and I'm telling him straight up, bro, what the hell is you doing, bro? Is you going to be – I need to know. Well, I sign anything. See. Yes, because if I'm but, CeeDee hey. Lamb, listen, because listen, CeeDee Lamb already has to know that they're going to try to franchise tag him. And if you don't know that, you a fool, CD. I love you, but you a fool. Yeah, all the only reason that Dak wouldn't hold out. I know, go ahead. At least not take a yeah, at least not take a hold out into the regular season. Once he misses a certain uh stretch threshold of games he'll have to play uh he had to re replay i mean i'm talking you know you know that you know what hold out i'm talking about though i'm talking about the Jalen ramsey hold out the the my neck my back my neck and my back and my because see what people don't understand is the only thing that you cannot equate for is for a player saying that they don't feel that they can go because it's a difference when a player says that they think they can play and the organization says, no, I don't think you can play. When I'm hey, shout out to Chris Bosch for, for the 499 Super Sticker. Salute to you for showing love. And Chris Bosch, they got you a raffle entry. If y'all want to be like Chris Bosch and uh, get an opportunity to win a Dallas Cowboy jersey, hit the Cash App, the Super Chat, uh, the Venmo, the motherfucking me PayPal. We got everything <laughs> up and running. So you want to get in where you fit in, you know, hit, hit one of those. $5 a pop for the raffle entry. Salute Ooh. to you. Conversation that a conversation that everybody's been talking about is, you know, there's been interest between Dalvin Cook and Ezekiel Elliott. What are y'all thoughts on either one of those guys? What are y'all thoughts about the Dallas Cowboy running back situation currently? Two niggas that ain't got a job want a job. That's that's my thought process about it. Because when you read the report, it says they are interested in coming to Dallas. It don't say that Dallas is interested in bringing them in. So you know, of course, if you're a healthy running back. A team needs a running back. Of course, you'd be interested to come to Dallas where you can try to compete for uh, for a playoff spot. Like, hell, we just seen Dalvin Cook play for the Jets on a, on a team that wasn't going anywhere. We've seen Zeke, Zeke Elliott playing on the Patriots, a team that wasn't going anywhere. So, of course, running backs, is, they still feel like they have a little bit left in the tank, you know, will want to come to Dallas at this point. Because, listen, everybody else in their mama that uh, the signed running backs. Dallas Cowboys, the, big, the biggest name. I still don't understand how it would work out with Zeke if he signed a contract back with the Dallas Cowboys. I, you know, just with the dead money situation, like you owe this man money already. So does that factor in to what you give man, him? Is, million, is Zeke, right? is, yeah, is Zeke going to be cheating himself? Is, is if we give him a two million dollar contract, would the Dallas Cowboys only be on the hook for four? Like I don't know how that plays out. If you give him a two million dollar contract, would you then owe him eight? I don't really know how that how that works uh, works for that. But, you know, uh, I'm desperate for a running back at this point. You could have told me that uh, J you could have told me that uh, that J that uh, Peterson was coming out of retirement and want to play for the Dallas Cowboys. I would entertain it. I'm desperate. Say, Rico, I'm, I'm desperate to say I'll it. Go say ahead. I'll say this, though. Um, I'm not – I think Dalvin might be over. You know what I'm saying? If we didn't sign Rico, you might have could have paired him with another back. But the danger with Zeke, though, man, do y'all – Okay, listen. Do y'all think Zeke can come back and we draft a running back and that running back be top priority? Because I don't want to play the politic game. I don't. Then if you're not going to play the politic game, then training camp will, def will define and decide who's going to be the running back number one. Because if you're not going to play the politic game, you're just going to put them on this team and then you're going to let them give them opportunity to play. And whoever plays best is going to lose. You know what I'm saying? That's football. Politics so, would be you Zeke, draft a kid and then he already has his position. Zeke gonna take a step back. No, Zeke is not gonna take a step back. You're gonna tell both them dudes you're gonna throw your ass in a pit with a knife. Whoever comes out alive is the one who got the job. That's what you're gonna do. That's what football is. Football yeah. at its core is whoever no, well, that's what it that's, should that's be. That's football without politics, but we know politics exactly, but is that's the real thing. I'm sorry. No, nah, you're right. Go ahead. My bad. No, I gotta work on that. My bad. I just was saying, yeah, you, no, was, you, you it was actually interjection time, but 
I was just saying that uh, you know, politics is a real thing. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a real thing. So I mean, in the purest form, if we just say, hey, who's the best running back? You know, you show me what you got, you show me what you got, and then whoever's the best, that's who get the job. We know that's not real life, though. That's not how yeah. it works. And I know Zeke got so much cachet in his locker room and in his organization, he might not even be the best back and still be demanding snaps and um, runs. That's what I'm afraid of, just being honest. Well, think about this. If Zeke, I don't think that Zeke has that problem because Zeke was already sharing the load with Tony Pollard when he felt that he was the best back getting about to make $12 million a year. He didn't have a problem doing it then. So why would he have a problem doing it now? You understand? And I would feel Zeke also was that Zeke already did that in New England. Like Zeke wasn't starting running back in New England. They had another running back. I forget what his name, but they had another dude that was in front of him. So I think I Zeke is the Dallas, though. Just yeah, in Dallas, in Dal bro, in Dallas, he was sharing in year three. Zeke was sharing the load with Tony Pollard. So he's already like, oh, Zeke hasn't been a true starting running back since 2007, 18. You well, know what I'm saying? Let me ask you like this, Wes, because I think you're missing what I'm saying. Listen to this. In a situation, a critical situation, do you think that Dak is going to be like, hey, Ricky, come in the game? <laughs> or you think, no, I think like, listen to me. come on, this Zeke, is, I know where we, you know what I'm saying? I know you know what we're doing. Let's go. This is what I think. I think that Dak being the truest, one of the truest and honest competitors who actually told Dez Bryant, you will get the ball when you're open, is going to give the ball to whomever's open, bro. And I'm going to be honest with you. That's one thing I can definitely count on Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott don't have no favorites. He don't have no favorites. And you got to remember, we're talking about running backs. We're not talking about wide receivers. So, you know, Zeke will have his plays that he's, that he's more designed to be successful on. And then the young running back will have his plays that he's, you know what I'm saying, that he's being young. I need Zeke Elliott in the red zone to hold on to the ball and to be able to punch red zone plays in. That's what I need. Now, I keep on hearing this thing called a progress stopper. I'm going to tell you this right now. Progress stoppers only exist in non-contact contact sports. In a contact sport, progress does not you can't stop someone's progress if you're better than them. Their progress is not better than your production. That's not pro that's not a progress stopper. Your listen to me. You know what a real progress stopper is? Your work ethic. Your work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Someone else being great at what they're doing can't stop you from being great. Think about this. I'm going to be a great podcaster regardless of what these two dudes do. And guess what? They can be great too. <laughs> See what I'm saying? What, how how does think about this? If if I felt that doing content, because a lot of people be like, damn, West Coast, you you're sharing your 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 content with people with, with other people. They're being on your show. Why wouldn't they be a progress stopper? They're not a progress stopper. They made me better. Landlord HCM, they make me better. Why? Because there'd be legitimate days that I don't want to do this, and they'd be like, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? So in professional sports, there is not an ex pro there is not a such thing as progress stopping. There's called he Hold was, on. There wait, 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 wait. Uh, can I interject? Go ahead. I, I know I know the situation you're gonna say too. Go ahead. Well, Lady yep. But see, he was a progress right. stopper because he wasn't okay. good though. Uh, but that's what I'm saying, and th and that's what we're talking about. I think you I think you're finally on, on the same page with us. You can be a progress stopper. If you're favored and you're not better, and that's when the politics yes, also that's when play. politics is so and and that's and that's all we saying. Like, we want exactly what you said. We want the fair competition. If it comes down that Zeke is the better running back right now, let him get it. If it comes down that the new uh new guy's the better running back, let him get it. But my thing is, we know that they they play favorites, they do all kind of weird stuff in Cowboys world because it's it's Cowboys Nation. This would not be a conversation if this was, was Kansas City. But we saw them sit down a first round, a first round pick running back at the seven round can pick. Can I back. press pause right we, now? We, this, oh, can I can I ahead, say one more thing ahead, real quick ahead. before you interject? Another progress stopper that, that folks don't talk about was Jason Witten at the back end of, of his career when he would not let any of the other running back, I mean other tight ends get in where they fit in. And they were obviously better at that point in time. They let that man couldn't couldn't run past me, could, couldn't outrun me at, at one point out there, man. And he was still out there getting all getting all the catches, getting all the targets. So this, and shit. this is what I'm so, about to say real quick. Like, so this my this is what scares me. Cause you just said that we all want pure competition, let the best man win. But what if it's not a clear mm -hmm. winner? 
There will be. A, there's always. Let's there's always a clear winner. No. It no, there's close. always a clear winner. It could be no, close. there's not. You know what I mean? Tell you, if I just told if you. If it's close, bro, they gonna side with Zeke. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's all. There's always going to be a winner in professional sports. You want to know why? Because Zeke is on a, in a seventy play game. Zeke is not gonna play seventy games. There is a scheme for a reason. Zeke is not going to have the same stretch plays that this rookie who's 24 has. You're not going to be funny for telling him, Zeke, all right, I want you to stretch it all the way to the goddamn tight end and then wait for the damn – wait for this wide receiver and then bounce it back to that. They're not going to be doing that with Zeke. What they're going to be doing with Zeke is um, we're on the nine-yard line. I'm about to hand it to your ass twice. Uh, you're on that first – on that first – on that, and people be like – Oh, Zeke only gets you three, four yards a game. Well, guess what? If you're on the NAR, if you're inside the 10, that means Zeke gonna get me five and then give me four the next play. And one thing I love about Zeke is he is a heavy running back. That means he always falls forward. You show me some plays in Zeke's career where a somebody met Zeke, even his rookie year in that preseason game, where someone has met Zeke. And you have stopped him, and he went this way, and they and the, they was on top. That don't happen to Zeke. The only time that happens to Zeke is in pass blocking. The only time you see Zeke get blew up is in pass blocking. And I'm going to tell you this right here. Listen to me. If you want the rookie, that's fine. Get the rookie. Keep the rookie. But guess what? Dak Prescott is not out there on naked shotguns in five wide receiver sets. So what does that mean? That means... 90% of the time when Dak drops back, there's a running back beside him. I'm going to ask you this question. This year, we are set up to pass the ball. We're putting everything on Dak. We're putting everything on CD, and we don't have a starting running back. Even if we do get one to you guys as standard, you say he's going to be washed or a rookie. So what does that mean? You're going to lead with the pass. I'm going to ask you this right now. you got a blitzing linebacker. Coming down that middle, who do you want picking him up? Ezekiel Elliott or some rookie from Texas? I'm sorry, bro. If that's going to be happening quite oftenly, give me the rookie. Let give me Zeke to do all the dirty work, and let the rookie sh get the shine. I don't see. And listen, no, nobody is saying that's not a good idea. The issue is you're not. We'll, we'll talk about the other side of it, where they are trying. They're going to try and sell. The person that that may not be better. We're just saying if the, if the competition comes down to it, we just want everybody to get in where they fit in. But see, I don't. That's but it. listen to me. I don't think the and Cowboys. Real quick, and I, I also need to get Neil's uh four ninety nine real quick, and then I'll let you cook. So shout out to uh, Numb Hand Neil with the four ninety nine for the mind. I also got you a raffle entry, my brother. He said, "Yep, the Cowboys do shit like keep Josh Ball and Chumi Doga and let Aviante Collins and Isaiah Lynn walk." I'm just saying they they do horrible things well, sometimes. Boy, school making on I, you. I, I don't think any, I don't think I don't think anybody is disagreeing with with what you're saying. I just think they have not shown us they're blocks, not trustworthy. Not all these shit. running backs can block. That's not true. I just, I'm just saying that they they have shown us that they do shit that's not trustworthy sometimes. That's that's all. It's on English. Yeah. So listen, and I'm gonna tell you this right here. What's going make on us, bro? Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you this right here. Any back that we get right now is not going to be is going to be splitting carries regardless. So that's what you you got to understand. There's two things to a running back. You need your long running back who's gonna take your long runs. Then you need your short bruiser back. I want Dak. I want Zeke for the dirty work and then you know what you put your other running back in there and let him do and guess what that's how the cowboys are set up now we wanted tony pollard for our glory stuff and we wanted rico dow for our bomb 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 all i'm saying is get a better bomb 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 guy you can still get that rick think about, think about this still go get the ricky and think about this rico dow is signed for so rico dow also plays special teams so he's on the team but even if he doesn't play a lot of running back, I don't care because he's still going to be in the backfield catching balls for on special teams. You know what I'm saying? So there's there was more than just running back reasons why they signed Rico Dow. He's also a key member on on every special teams. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, that brought up that brought me that brought up something. Can we touch on the new kickoff rule real quick? That is important. It looks that, so that, goofy. It it looks it looks ugly. I'm gonna try and pull this shit up real quick, man. But Kevontae Turpin, Turpin, Turpin is extra hyped about this. Cook. He hyped. 
that nigga hyped as hell about this uh, rule change, man. I ain't gonna hold you. Let me see if I can find what the what the what the thing looked like. I think I should. I think it's. I mean, my uh, question to the NFL is, what is the objective of it? Is it to make it safer, make it or is safer. it make it safer? The, the, no, they actually want more kickoffs because it's safer. Want more so kickoffs. then move the damn kick return back, duh. <laughs> All you right. got to do is move it back to where it originally was three years ago. Hold on, let me pull it up. This is what the new kickoff. They decrease the look distance like. between the defense, the defender, and the returner, so it won't be as high impacts. That's what they're trying to. And you and you also can't run until they field the ball. Like the the people that, uh, that kick the ball off, they, the other folks can't move outside of the kicker until the ball. Until he catches it. Yeah. So hold on. Let me share the screen, and then I can pull up this uh this real quick. Hold on. Boom. Now that I think about it, I Boom. really don't like it. <laughs> Actually, I really so don't listen. Like here's it. the. Uh, here, here, here! How it looks. Just a little eleven second clip. So he kicked the ball off. Everybody is still. The ball is fielded, and now you're right. Yeah, you see how they decrease the distance between the defenders and the returner, so it can be a lesser impact. They don't want them building up that much speed and just running into each other, like you know, gladiator school or something. I mean, you should. I feel like you should at least be able to have like three guys that can drop back at a safety position because basically whichever way you kick the ball, that's those guys have to be the most alert. I really don't like it though, bro. Because think about this. I mean, I understand it, it's supposed to give us more uh, returns and it's, it's, it's something like that. But at the same time, now we got to learn how to defend in this way. They got to learn how to, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lot of stuff. Fluke games getting worn off of some crazy stuff like this, man, or loss. Hey, like, I don't know if I like I'm, it. I John Foster, it's, basically, like, it's, it's basically like protecting a screenplay. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah matter of fact, it's, it's pretty much the same principle because the blocks are already yeah. set up. It's basically like a protect, a protect, pretend, uh, but that's why I said, that like half the field, if I was the deep, if I was the, why can't you just stack them all on one side then? You know what I'm saying? Because whichever side you kick it to, that's you, you the the returner don't have a time to, to, to threaten either side. So will an onside kick be the same normal onside kick or is that different too? I don't know. I got to look, I got to look that shit up. They probably did some goofy stuff and like left it the same. Cause they don't oh, want man. them. They don't want them that close because the onside gotta go ten yards. Like it, it's just stupid, bro. Like some stuff just need to be left alone. Man. It just do. Listen, they always holler about players protection, but they're trying to get them to play an eighteenth uh, game in the hey, season. I put a, hey, How listen to me. You know what I put? I put offensive linemen out there, nigga. <laughs> At this point, it just blow folks up, bro. And just blow folks up, cause bro, once you get blow two, cause if you could blow two people up in the same hole, that's a seam like a mug. And then literally, the touchdown should be at the fifty, cause once you get to the fifty, bro, like ain't nobody catching you. There's no safety. Tyron Church said, "Landlord, you're wrong." Or do I got an opinion? Let me know. Am I wrong, or is that my opinion? Hell no, nah, you wrong. <laughs> yeah, you from Alabama, so you <laughs> it's cool, though. You know what I'm saying? You know, and that's that's just how it works, man. I don't make it's, the rules. It's all good, man. What that boy said, man. It's always gonna be haters. That's the way it is. Hater is have marry hater, just have hater kids. Have you hater know kids. What I'm <laughs> they gonna be everywhere. So you know, it is what it is. The hip, how y'all? All right, we talk about rule changes. How do y'all feel about the hip drop tackle? I'll, I'll just throw my 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 opinion out there. I understand why they banned it. I also don't like that we put another thing in the hands of the damn officials that don't get shit right. I mean, I see it like this. It's still going to happen. You're just going to get a penalty for it. Like, I, people aren't out there doing that shit on purpose, bro. Like, like exactly. that's what people got to understand. That, like, yeah, we hate the Eagles, but, bro, they don't, they don't hate each other like that, bro. These dudes all went to college together. They all played um, – a high school football together like they don't they're they they do not have that's why people get all mad when micah parsons be hanging out with dudes from philly you want to know why because he's from he's from philadelphia <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. like it would make sense that he knows players and they would hang out with him and go to philly's games that makes sense you know what i'm saying but um 
You know, these dudes are not out there purposely trying to hurt people. The only person, you know what I'm saying? I don't, you know what I'm saying? I think Draymond Green, I think Draymond Green, <laughs> listen to me. I think Draymond Green is a, I think it's a respect. I think it's a respect factor. And I also think with him, I think it's an acceptable behavior where he's at. You know what I'm saying? Because Golden State, I feel like if Golden State start benching him and start taxing his money for the things he do, he'd probably stop doing it. But the only person that's taxing him is the, in the NBA. And that money just turns into charity money. You know what I'm saying? So I think part of Draymond Green's moniker is they allow him to do that. I don't think it's just something he's out there purposely doing it because he don't do it to he don't do it to LeBron and LeBron is home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't never seen him do stuff to stuff that he that people he he's always people that he. You know what I'm saying? So back to the NFL, I don't think people are out there purposely hurting people. So it's just gonna be something that you're going to see happen, and it's gonna happen, and you're gonna get penalties for it. I mean, my question, I, like I said, it's delicate in the time you challenge, you you change anything to a game that we all love like that. But uh, I look at it like this, man. If it's if it's just egregiously being way more injuries from that particular tackle, I mean, you gotta kind of consider it, right? You, yeah, you absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm not opposed to banning it. I'm opposed to the interpretation that's going to come out of it. it they're going to they're going to be a whole bunch of normal ass tackles from behind. They're going to get called for 15 yards. Well, they going yeah. that's execution, be a, which they don't. And, see, do and then that. my question. And then my question. Yeah, I'm just talking. I'm just talking about how. Oh, they, and then my question is this: What if you got a running back break loose? You tackle him from behind while you're doing this 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 tackle that they just outlawed. He fumbles the ball. Mm. It'd be the same as if you he fumbled the ball on a face mask. They're gonna act like the like they gonna act like the turnover never happened. And so, that's you know, corny, bro. That's corny. Fumble, if you if you horse collar somebody and they fumble, you, they just gonna assess the, the penalty. But see, horse, a, 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 a horse collar makes sense because you're driving somebody from behind. But like, I'm, just, I'm hey, not under I'm the impression that you're purposely trying to hurt somebody. They said hip drop Oscar with the one ninety nine on somebody in said the hip drop tackle had. A uh, twenty-five time more injury increase than than you other can't tackles. Ignore that, I'm man. listen. <laughs> I'm 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 not I'm not saying they shouldn't try and and get the play out. I'm saying the way that they're finna butcher this, they can't even get past interference. Thank right. you. I'm not talking about the 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 uh, abandoning the tackle. I'm just talking about how they finna f this up. Watch, watch, and then our love being Cowboys fans, it's you know, we get screwed. It's gonna be some shit. It's gonna be some shit against you us. Know we yeah, get and then you gonna have a situation. <laughs> you gonna have a situation where a quarterback, where a guy Appreciate does this to a quarterback, awesome. he gets the ball off, makes a big play, so he gets the big play plus the penalty. Man. Yeah, but like he said, the execution gonna be a be a uh, you know a hurdle that we'll have to jump. At the same time, but like I said, man, if like he said, if that's true, a twenty five percent increase when they get tackled like that, that's something that can't be ignored after a while. If you got, if you got a long, like a long term list of data that says that, I gotta, I gotta address that. You know what I'm saying? You got to. And then, like we said, a lot of people saying, how would they tackle? You know, bro, the shoestring tackle been a been one of the most <laughs> effective tackles <laughs> since day one. Like, hey, you grab their feet, they gonna fall. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna fall. I don't care how big it is. Like, you're gonna fall. If they trip you up, you will fall, sir. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. But, hey, maybe we have to... That's something else we gotta train differently for. You know what I'm saying? You gotta train differently with that. You gotta be able to uh know how to bring the ball carrier down in a different way now. So, all the rule changes, they all change everything. Like it, it, it's still something. Look, it might be a potential hip drop tackle that let somebody run the ball a hundred yards and win the game. Like we're gonna be like, dang, he he didn't. He was thinking about the hip drop, and you know what I'm saying. Like at that point, just just do it and take the penalty. So I mean, that's gonna be another challenge for a lot of defenders. It, it running quarterback, running quarterbacks are gonna be really running quarterbacks are gonna be. They're gonna do a good job. It's hard as hell to, to be a defender anyway. So they got something else to uh, uh -huh. do. But they, hey, they they always said they wanted more points anyway. They they flat out said it. They were concerned because scoring was down last year. <laughs> they want more points. They want box office. So you know, all the rule changes will always be slanted for the offense. Unfortunately, it's just what it is, man.
It's just what it is. I'm trying to see if I can find a list of, of all the new rule changes. I seen somebody. I know that you now uh, get an extra challenge if you get one of your two challenges they correct. Been doing that, like like the NBA, so, right? You know, it used to be you had to get both your challenges right to get an extra challenge. Now, if you get one out of two challenges right, you that's get that's how extra the challenge. NBA is, I believe. I'm not the NBA, sure. well, you get to keep your challenge if you're right. Well, the ability, I mean, the fact that they're giving you ability to challenge more, just lets you know that they understand that the game is flawed. But if we don't want to get to the point where we're trying to correct the game, where we actually make the game actually worse, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a penalty on every freaking play. Unfortunately, fellas, just, that's just what the life we live. That's the NFL. Like, somebody's going to put somebody's hand is going to end up on someone's face mask on every single play. That's why you coach against it. That's why you coach – uh, offense alignment, not to get let let them get their hands on you. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because they don't always see things. You know what I'm saying? And to keep it real, you don't want them seeing everything, man. You don't want them seeing everything. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that one, man. And if you Damn, if I can't you grab Derrick Henry feet, sir, he will fall. <laughs> I promise you, he will. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta you gotta know how to do it. You gotta rake his feet. He's gonna fall. Or hey, hold on for dear life. You 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 gonna take it to the extreme. It's gonna be hard to tackle him anyway. <laughs> we got regardless of I what mean, rule you got out though. Hey, let's let's hey for this last little maybe 10, 20 minutes, man. Let's do some rapid fire questions, man, because we got some super chats coming in. Hey, if you got a question, throw it in the comment box. If you got a question with a super chat, I promise you we're gonna read it. We will not leave until we read every super chat or every cash app uh that has been sent. So Oscar Westbrook, uh Henny, you wanna read that? Sure. My boy said with the 499 salute Hello. to you. He said everybody says in the offensive league into the playoffs. Start. All of a sudden it's a defense in the and running the ball. Listen, man. That's because listen, you're playing it's, good it's, teams. Because you're it's, playing it's, good teams. It's, it's 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 different. It's it's different in postseason, man. You wanna know why? Because you're playing I mean, good teams. You're team. not lying, but yeah, you're not lying, but you know, like it's it's different, man. You know, then you, you most of the time you're you're not in ideal weather. Like you go to if you go to San Francisco, it's gonna be rainy and cold and windy. If you playing in Green Bay, it's gonna be a fucking blizzard. Like it's, it's getting crazy. Like of course the defense better. You know you playing in that. You in a hostile situation, sir. You go back to what works and what you know, because that's what happens in the playoffs. Everybody goes right back to running the ball and playing defense. I promise you. Like I look at the playoffs, like you know. I don't know, bro. I, I, I'm a pretty decent Madden player. You know what I'm saying? I can whoop some tail if I wanted to. But, you know, nah. when you when you want to bet some money now, that's a whole different style of play. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it far as the, uh, <laughs> far as the playoffs, right? Look, playing in a regular season, like, we just having fun. Like, we, we just doing what we do. But when it's playoff time, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm not going for it on no fourth down. I'm kicking the field goal. You got to play like the computer. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 play, you go from playing like you to the computer. Like, that's the only way. That's how it is. Like, that's the differences between the style of play uh, compared from the regular season and the postseason. Like, it's like all the money is on the line. Everybody gets tighter. Everybody gets, you know, more cautious. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. you, ain't, you ain't bullshitting at all about that. So let me ask you about this discourse with Tyler Smith. Because Jerry Jones said it would be a good idea to move that man to left tackle. Bob McCarthy said, F all day, he's going to be the left guard. Mm. Uh, how how y'all feeling going forward with Tyler Smith? What is the best plan of action? Would you leave your all-pro guard at the position that he's played the best, or would you move him back to tackle because he does have upside and he was on the all-rookie team when he played there? What what are, what are y'all thoughts about that? I'm playing him. Stuff, certain stuff just going to take care of itself. I really do. I think, and this is my answer finna be quick. I think certain things just take care of themselves, meaning the football guy's gonna have either a tackle or a guard sitting there for us because it's meant to be. And we're gonna draft one of them. And whichever way that falls, that's what Tyler Smith will play. That's how I feel like it's gonna work. Like, no lie. I feel like if they got their ideal tackle there, then Tyler Smith will stay at guard. If they got their ideal guard there, then Tyler Smith will play tackle. I think it's going to be that simple. So I believe they they trying to stay, you know what I'm saying, with their head on the swivel to see what happens. So that's how I think it's going to work out. Like It's one of them things we probably shouldn't wor worry about, really. 
it's gonna work itself out. I feel like I, I think I think that I think that guard who just got that four year deal worth eighty six million dollars, making him the highest paid guard ever. Um, Tyler Smith was in his second year. He's a first round pick. I know Cowboys are gonna want to get him at least to like a at least a one franchise tag. But I'm curious to know what they would want to pay him. You got to pay him at a guard. Or you got to pay him at a left tackle. I think you know. Obviously, he probably still got maybe two years for those to, to for that to think of and thought of. But at the same time, man, what makes football sense is to play him at guard because you you have Zach Martin and then Tyler Smith surrounded by a question mark at whoever you want at center. At least they'll be better off. Now, um, it's also kind of crazy, too, because you're going to be throwing the ball heavily this year, too. So, you know, it would be nice to have you know, maximum protection at that left tackle. But I'm going to tell you this, man. Um, once you make all pro status in the NFL, that means you're the best at that position, bro. You should theoretically stay where the hell you are, bro. I agree to, to an extent. Yeah, I agree. Desperation. Hey, I know they do stuff out of desperation all the time, but if you're asking what his best position is, it's being guard, especially in his, with his nasty streak. Like that man had double digit penalties playing yep. tackle, and he was just out there manhandling dudes. Like, it just looked too aggressive, in the words of landlord from Alabama. Yeah, <laughs> it just looked too aggressive. Like he just be whipping people. You can't be in the open just Tackles doing people finesse. dirty, bro. Yeah, you got to be smoother with it. You know what I'm saying? And he's just an aggressive dude. He beat the crap out of people. Um, you know, in a football sense, he really do. Like, and, please and watch about him. He's and think about monster. this. I think anytime you make a guard play tackle, you're probably going to get a lot of uh, penalties. Because when you're a guard, you have this guy that's shading you, and you have this guy that's shading you. Bro, when you're a left tackle or a right tackle, bro, anything that you do outside, everybody, the crowd, the camera, everybody can see it. That's why when Tyler Smith was getting them penalties, we was like, yeah, that was holding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, that was holding. Because you could mm -hmm. see it. Yeah, and why did his penalty go down at guard? Because we he was still listen to me. He he was still probably holding people at guard. It's just hard to see. <laughs> How about say as a guard, oh, you gotta think hey. it's two it's two human beings blocking both of your arms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the refs gotta be that the ref that called holding on that play, it'd be the egregious. one behind the line of scrimmage. It'd or it has him. to be egregious. It'd be yeah, yeah. It'd be mm. him most of the time, though. The one that's standing behind the line of scrimmage, because he's the only one that can see it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, real real quick, shout out to uh Triggs. I know I had the stuff up here for a minute, but he had uh they hit landlord with a Salute, two piece. Man. Uh he said Cowboys all 32 teams, cowboy franchise mode win. I'm not really sure what you're trying to say, but also shout out to my boy. Uh, Mr. Richburg, it's gonna be his birthday midnight. So y'all make sure y'all show some love, support to my hey, guy, man. uh, one of the big supporters out there, man. So y'all make sure y'all show my brother some Ooh, love, man. man. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Richburg. Yeah. Happy, birthday. happy early birthday, Thanks my for brother. All your support too, man. Oh, uh, there is something I want to talk to y'all about before we got out of here too, though. Let me see if I, if I got it up here. Yeah. All right. Cause I see I seen y'all talking about it in the chat box. So I might we might as well talk about it on here real quick, man. Cause everybody named mama is gonna be coming back from injury in 2024, Yikes. fortunately. Maji Smith, who already had a down season to the standards people wanted, uh, is gonna be coming off of a shoulder shoulder surgery. Luke Schoolmaker, who should have never been drafted, nice. um, uh, is coming off of a shoulder injury. He already 50. Mm. Uh, the the Marvin Overshawn we know is coming back from an ACL. So listen, your first round pick, your second round pick, and your third round pick from last year's draft will be coming will be coming off an of injury in twenty twenty four. Let's speak on it, man. Let's so speak on it. let's speak on. How do y'all feel about that? Knowing that, it, and listen, you don't really have a one take on this team no more. You're going to be relying on Maji Smith way more this season because Hank ain't here. Um, they're going to try and play schoolmaker as as tight end number two because they got to they got to see that investment through. You're going to be asking the Marvin Overshawn to be a starting linebacker on your team, where it be the Sam Will coming whatever. off of ACL, uh, fresh off coming coming off of ACL. So do these all do all these injuries from people that will probably be contributing to your team? Do that concern you? Yes, it do. Yes, it hmm. do. And it's sad that our first 
three picks of 2023 are all coming out for of injury. And that's crazy. Like, Miser didn't even miss no time for injury. <laughs> right? He didn't really he miss no hurt. time for injury. Schoolmaker didn't miss no time for injury. Overshawn got injured in preseason. School, schoolmaker missed time uh, we with playing fast the beginning of the when he first Okay, came but in. let's say this. The, the, well, school was hurt when he first got here as well. Facts, he was. So, so, yeah, so he, had, he, had the planter, he had the planter when he came here. Yeah, he was hiding it in the picture, remember? He had, that nigga had, he had <laughs> weeds growing out of his feet. You remember, look, everybody they had a picture, and he was standing. He had his foot behind somebody else, so you wouldn't see the boot. Y'all don't remember that? <laughs> so, like, I'm asking myself, was these dudes hurt anyway? Was they hurt already? Like, that's crazy. So, I, I, I really just don't like that. And yeah, to be quite honest, man, like, schoolmaker seemed like a good dude, man. I met the dude at training camp. He was kind enough to come over and give us autographs. No other player did it that day. Schoolmaker came over there and gave us an autograph on the hat. But I ain't even want to sell that to y'all because I was so disappointed. Okay? I ain't want to raffle it off. Look how solid landlord is. I could have came up here like, hey, y'all, I got a schoolmaker hat that we can raffle off. No. I was so disappointed. that but I when he do be good, we raffle that mug off. Hey, if he get good, then, you know, that's different. Oh, <laughs> but I just sat it on my couch and said, okay, you sit over there until further notice. Like, I'm not going to do that. I was disappointed. So, like, now we got to look at Overshawn coming right behind him. Like, bro, we finna, we finna push him into a starter role. Is that not concerning? It's it's concerning as hell. Real quick, shout out to Numbhand Neil on one of y'all side with the 499. Oh, he said the... He said, do we even have a defensive, defensive tackle that's 300 pounds no. anymore? Uh, if you believe the reports, Mozzie Smith was currently under 300 pounds. At least he was when the season ended. Osa Adigizua is was under 300 pounds last time that I checked. He's a three-tech, so I'm not really tripping about that. Uh, I think like the the uh, the boy on the practice squad, maybe. I'm looking at this, though. Okay. This is what really pisses me off when I get to thinking about the – the sabotage that Mr. Um, Danielle Quinn, <laughs> he's the op now, so he get all disrespect. Danielle Quinn did to my football team. Because, look, I know some of the people thinking it ain't his fault. But, listen, we only think about the starters, right? We mad at him about the mm -hmm. linebackers. We mad at him about, you know, the safety room and all this goofy stuff. We forgot that it was moves leading up to the things that he did in the season. He let go Quinn Bohanna. Why you let go Quinn Bohanna then? We could use him right now. You you let go Quinn Bohanna. You let go Devin Harper. You you let go a lot of Jabrell Cox, even though, you know, it is what it is. But all these other players that you let go. Isaiah, Isaiah Land. Land. You let go a lot of people before we even got to being, you know, unsatisfied by how you played the stars. I'm questioning all of your moves, bro. Like somebody gotta somebody gotta pull this up for me. The day I figure out when is it uh legal for other teams to contact coaches in season, then my investigation will start. I gotta figure that out. I gotta figure that out. Cause if I see a big time shift in the way our defense played in the schemes and, and the play calling, that's evidence right there. That's that's un- Deniable evidence right there. You was playing around on the yeah. job, bro. Hey, but back to, can I say this about the injuries though? Because we, 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 we done stopped there. There's a there's even more people coming back from injury in 2024. We're just not talking about it. Trayvon Diggs just had a fresh ass knee surgery coming back from star. injury. We are <laughs> we are starter, Maji Smith. Off an of injury will be a starter this year. The Marvin Overshawn off an of injury will be a starter this year. Uh, Schoonmaker, if, if we're a 12 tight end set, you, we run a 12 personnel, you might say he's a starter coming off an of injury. John Steven Jr., like they mentioned, rotational um tight end coming off an of injury. Uh, who else? I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there's more folks. Well, no, not not uh not lbe's gone so no let's talk about that but yeah this 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 is a lot this is a lot part. This, this this part of i gotta team. make this point because i ain't gonna lie I'm, i forgot about it until you mentioned it so <laughs> i gotta get this out before it flees me and the nation needs to hear this 
we all seen what John Stevens Jr. was doing last year in count. Now, now true mm -hmm. enough, it was count. But I'm telling you right now, he was looking like the best tight end. Let me say that again. It wasn't Jake Ferguson, y'all. <laughs> like, real talk. Go back and listen to everybody that was commenting on the tight end room in count. Wes, you was there. I know you can vouch for this. I mean, he was doing it in game too. John Stevens Jr. was the best tight end on this team in count. They was looking at him better than Ferg, y'all. So this one thing I want to say, this is a public service announcement. And we just had this discussion, Wes. We finna see what politics look like. We finna see. We finna see if it's politics in Dallas. Because it ain't no way in hell schoolmakers should be prioritized over John Stephen Jr. And if this man come in here and play like he did last year. But this is the thing. Watch out for that, y'all. Watch out for that. That's this, all I'm going to say. This is, this, this is the thing. The early report is before John Stephen's injury. The, the person they were going to cut was your boy. Hendershot. Hendershot. Hendershot was, was due on the cutting block before John Steven Jr. went down with the injury. At least that was that was what was being reported. But most reports said he was going to make the team that uh, it was Hendershot who was on the bubble. So I have no question if he come back out, he's healthy and he played like he did, he'll be on the team. The <laughs> issue is going to be, is he going to jump over a uh, schoolmaker who's the he second said round He'll pick. be on the team. Like, that's what you get for being an underrated underdog coming out the – you know, a diamond in the rough. Undrafted, it's, yeah. It's Con converted, com com converted wide receiver, turned into a tight end, um, made it against all odds. That man did not play tight end until we asked him to play Congratulations. tight Congratulations. You on the team. <laughs> well, and Darren said, Dallas failed. Ligaments. Cowboys. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> now, look. Now, think about this, though. This is a problem with some of our culture, y'all. It's a tough conversation. I know I've been mad for about two months now. I can't hear, but I don't know what you want me to do. Listen, this is a problem with our culture when you think about this. We up here fighting for a player who look like he's good. Think about this. Man, I just seen an article. The Kansas City Chiefs just hired. They just signed a rugby player. <laughs> they don't care. They trying to go. They leaving no stone unturned. Them boys is finding people from everywhere, and they going to give them an opportunity, too. Thanks. So this man finna play. They, I think they say he finna be a wide receiver. KC up here signing. Rug, rugby players, y'all. So do, do that look like they finna actually have a real competition over there? Pacheco was a what? A seventh round, sixth round pick? Seventh round pick. Like, seven round picks don't start? They gave him a real opportunity. So this is what I'm saying. This is the beauty of not having politics being involved on your team. Politics keep great players off your team. That's what they do. And good players get mad and leave. That's what happens. You lose out on great talent because they tired of the BS. Think about this. And that's what I want people to realize. Because I ain't going to lie. I was a victim of some politics stuff. And it's, it's, it's terrible. Because look. No matter what you do, what can you do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You've been out here balling, and they still ain't finna give you an opportunity. What can you do? At that point, what are, what are you going to do? Well, like, if you if that was your son here, what advice would you give him? That's tough, ain't it? Yeah. He's doing everything he's supposed to do. He's going out there every day. He's showing up. He's getting better. He's playing. He's balling out when he gets his opportunity. And then as soon as he do it, they like, yeah, kid, go sit down. Thanks. And he clearly better than the other dude. What can you do? This is why politics is so bad for the league because it ain't going to do nothing but make that young man get pissed off and say, screw this, I'm going to go try somewhere else. That's all that's going to happen. I mean, ask Aviante Collins how that shit worked out because I saw him with my own two eyes outperform Josh Ball the entirety of a camp and they sent that man somewhere else. Devin Harper looked like the best linebacker we had. <laughs> and he didn't get no no opportunities. None. Mm -hmm. Man, I remember that. that, that, I didn't even that, man, that man was out there. Wow, wow. He was out there hitting folks, bro. And he was out there playing downhill. I'm talking about reading and reacting, foot in the dirt, just going, going crazy. And then next time you know, he gets nothing. 
He got How? released. He got waived. That's crazy, bro. And we got underperforming linebackers, y'all. Do y'all get it? I can see if we had – look, if we had linebackers balling and then Devontae um, – what his name is? Devin Harper was a baller too. I'd be like, okay, I get it. He, he just – he balling, but he ain't balling out them. He ain't over playing them. But if we underperforming at a position and this dude still can't get no chance – there's something wrong with that equation. I don't know what you want me yep. to do with that, bro. I don't know what you want me to do with that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. So we talked about the folks coming back from injuries. We talked about the possibility of four being gone. We talked about the rule change. What else is on the is on the itinerary for today, man? I feel like there's something that I'm missing. I don't know. I'm old. I'm old, so y'all got to bear with me. Mm. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, they back working. So, hey, so this is from today, if I'm not mistaken. Brandon Cooks and Dak Prescott are back in the lab working out, throwing sessions mm -hmm. and shit. Damn, so, I don't need to be. And listen, <laughs> year two in this offense, what is your comfort level for Dak Prescott and Brandon Cooks? A one, mean, meaning they're going to be awful together, or a 10 – Meaning they're gonna have a, a CD Lamb, Dak Prescott kind of connection. How well do you think the connection will be between Brandon Cooks and CD and uh and Dak Prescott year two of the offense uh, after putting in more work together, having more time on tasks? Uh, on a scale of one to ten. Scale of one to ten. Uh, y'all know how I feel about Brandon Cooks, but I honestly I'm optimistic about this year two. I think this is going to be great all together. Like, we seen what year one was. I can see Dak playing even better in year two because he's comfortable. Um, first, before we give grades, what would you grade him last year? I mean, the touchdowns, the touchdowns would say he was at least a six or so at least a seven. The touchdowns, I mean, the touchdowns speak for themselves. Ten would be Jerry Rice. I'd say a seven. Considering it was their first year, and considering Brandon Cooks was grossly under targeted, like yeah, like he had I'll games, he had like he had games where he had like, two minute. targets, bro. I'll get Cousin six. We yeah, that's what I think. Mean. James, you know some, don't you, James Sims? Ooh. What hey, James just said? You gotta be one of my folks. <laughs> hey, he just named he just named some. You know, if you know, you know. So we'll just leave it at that. Upsipco versus Cowboys. Yeah. Who you got? Said plays have to develop first. We have suspect offensive line. Until <laughs> I see the offensive line, I'm not answering this question. Okay. Well, I'm not talking about the offensive line. I'm just talking about the connection between Dak Prescott and Brandon Cooks. Facts. You can have So what you said he was last year, hand, because you seem I like you was six. over there in a problem. You had a little tough. You had a little I, tough time over there. I just I just said a six. I said last year was a six. You know, I give him, I give him a five. Okay, last year was a five. So this year, I could see him being a a seven. I see him being better. I don't hate Brandon Cooks. I don't think he's trash. All I was saying is, I really feel like I don't know if it's gonna be enough, though. You know what I'm saying? That's what I. That's my whole take on it. I wanted to add somebody to that room. So where I didn't want to question if it would be enough. I would know, like, bro, we you know what I'm saying? Well, where you where you go from saying, okay, we got we got a nice uh wide receiver core to you go telling your friends, like, boy, do you see what we got over here? Like, yeah, that's, but that's then, a but different land, conversation right there. That's a different conversation. But landlord, my question to you, my question to you is then this. Do you think a wide receiver then does more with the production? I mean, with the targets that Brandon Cooks got. Because I'm going to keep it real with you. With the targets that Brandon Cooks got and his utilization, I think you got more than what you probably got. Because, man, bro, he had games where he had two and three targets, bro, as your number two receiver. And C.D. Lamb damn near had 1,800 yards. So that doesn't even sound like a guy. If you have your number one getting eight and 1,700 yards, I don't even see how you have a guy, another guy even close to 2,000 yards. I mean, to another 1,000 yards. But that is a lot of throwing. You still got to throw the ball to your third receiver and to your damn tight end. So 
you I do think know we were throwing the ball though, Riz. You know that. Yeah, right? I know we were throwing we, the ball, we, but, we, no, but saying, we weren't throwing the ball to him though. I'm saying we weren't throwing the ball to him though. We weren't throwing the ball to him though. Move forward. That's what I, I just want you to know that. I know we want to. I know we probably should run more. I know you want us to run, but I want you to understand this. We are going to throw the ball. That's what exactly. We and that's why and that's why I'm saying I like Brandon Cooks because the touchdowns is what I'm most impressed about. He was your second team. He was second on the team in touchdowns. Despite everything you say, he was second on your team in touchdowns. OK, let me ask you this question. I swear this is not a bash Brandon Cooks campaign. It's not. I just want to ask this. The people who low on deck, what they do, they say uh, his competition was terrible. Like, uh Dak had a good game against the Giants. We don't care about the Giants. Like, the Giants are trash. We don't care about Washington. Washington suck. That's who he balled out against. The best games he had was Washington and the Giants. If you well, man, those are also game, the games that he got targeted to, though. Those are man. also games that Cowboys – listen to me. You cannot tell me a receiver except for Randy Moss that balled out with three targets. Bro, he come had, on, bro. He, all right, Brandon Cooks had 81 targets on the season in 15 games. Go look at the go look at weeks one through five. Go look at them targets by games one through five. I think week one was probably his, he had one game where he was like a decent over five targets. Yeah, Other than that, was two. Could you four. pull up CD Lamb targets last year? Not last year, but year before that, because he wasn't heavily targeted like this. So just for, for, for perspective, you, know, listen to me. At, you don't oh, have no, to. Wait listen a minute, to me. Wait a minute, no, no, no I'm, I'm reading the comments. I'm reading the comments. Oh, just for perspective, we gonna look at the a normal year for CD Lamb because it went much over hundred because I complained about it. So a normal year for CD Lamb and targets, and then eighty one targets, and Brandon Cooks missed the game. He missed, like two, he missed, games. One game. missed oh, he two games. Missed two games. So okay, maybe he would have got maybe what. Four more targets, ten, five, six more targets. What read them targets out, Reeks one. Read them targets out, Henny. Everybody was struggling in the beginning, yeah. though. So like, CD Lamb was being targeted. CD Lamb was shit. This, there's really not a, a that huge of a difference between 2022 targets and 2023. The difference in between CD Lamb's target in 2022 and 2023 was Dak Prescott missing games. Uh, mm. So he, he had 156 targets in 2022, and we know that Cooper Rush played five games. He had 181 targets in 2023. So that's more targets. So what it is is what what I think I was complaining about last year. Oh, that was the year before that. One of them years, the the year that Cooper Cup went ballistic, he had almost 100 to more targets than CD. <laughs> I well, promise. But hold on, hold on. Let me, can I say this? Go ahead. CD Lamb would never give him the Amari Cooper treatment. There's not a single season where, where CD Lamb has not had at least 111 targets. You want to know why? 111, he has 88. 111, <laughs> 120, 156, 181. Matter of fact, at this at this pace, he might get 200 targets this year. CD did not know that that little conversation he had with Jerry John probably drastically changed his life. Henny, read Brandon Cook's targets, please. Week I one. A, I don't have it broke down week by week. Henry. It was you can't do it. You can pull it up. Hold on, then. I'm gonna look at some other shit. I know, but I'm looking. I will look at some other shit. So give me a second. I can right. pull it up if y'all. Let me see. Let me see. Yes. Because, like, of course, you need targets, but I told you, to me, it go hand in hand. You gotta be, you gotta be open. Right, but yeah, but you listen to me. No, that's not true. Because yeah. wide receivers catch. Listen to me. Wide yeah. receivers are not going to be open on every play, and you're still going to get not the ball. Every play, you? But so you just that's said. Not, hold I will on, say. I will said, say. Ceedee Lamb was the one. So, bro, no, like Brandon could hold say, hold Listen, on, Brandon. Hold on, hold on. You just said C.D. Lamb was the guy. He's going to get the targets. If you forcing a pass to somebody, who he going to force it to? Wes? Not Brandon Cooks. He going to force it to C.D. If, yeah, if, but that's if, no, but that's no shade them, on Brandon Cooks though. That's I'm that's saying, you can, that's not a shade on Brandon Cooks. This is my point. If both of them covered, because you just said you don't got to be open. If I'm throwing it to somebody not open, I'm throwing it to 88. That's what you should you do. Be, that's and you should do that. That's why his targets might have been down. That's my point. Yeah, but but I'm saying we can, and I agree with you on that. But we can't agree and say that oh, you weren't getting targeted because you weren't getting open. No, that's not true. Because Amari Cooper wasn't getting targeted either, and he was always open. You know what I'm saying? That, that was just a bastard treatment right there. Yeah, you're right, but I'm saying yeah, it still listen, proves that it's open. But listen, listen what I'm saying is Let me ask this. you one question, and I'm done. Are all wide receivers created equally? No. 
So that's why that's my point. That's why I feel like okay, Brandon Cooks, you don't have to be open every time. You don't. But every uh, every wide receiver is not gonna get that treatment, bro. They just not. I understand that, but that still doesn't prove your point as far as him not getting the ball because he wasn't open. Like C D Lamp, listen to me. This is that you actually proved my point. Because what I'm saying is this because he wears an 88. I don't really demand much from my second receiver. Uh, uh, 600 yards and eight touchdowns, I'll take that all day because my 888 is going to have, should have 1600, touch, 1,600 yards and like 12, 13 touchdowns. So it's like, go like go look at what Terrence Newman, Terrence Williams bit at his best season that he ever did when Dez was going off. Your number two receiver is not going to, bro, you don't have, listen to me, the only time you have a situation where you have two guys going over a thousand yards is when you have two legitimate number one receivers. Minnesota did that because Minnesota had Thielen, who was in his prime, and they had Diggs, who was a young wide receiver that was tearing the league up. And they had it, but they was it's been proven that what both those guys were number ones, right? Yeah, I almost did it with Gallup now that year. Yeah, yeah, but I listen to me. But, but listen to me. But oh, they weren't gonna get a thousand, they uh, weren't gonna get a they weren't yeah. going to get a thousand yards because they were number ones. See, Michael Gallup wasn't no thousand. They were going to get a thousand yards because Dak was going to throw for six thousand. Dak was going to throw for the ball forty freaking goddamn time. They were going to get a thousand yards by by sheer numbers. That's, that's why they were making gonna... the case that it can't. It's not possible. We just. I am. What I'm is. making the case that I'm making is this. This is the case that I'm making. One, the Cowboys had damn near three receivers at a thousand yards, and we didn't win no Super Bowl. Nor did it. Nor did our offense or our defense. Our not defense. Our offense look even different. If anything, I think it hurts your team because, bro, that means you're throwing the ball when you're not making completions. That means you're what? That means your defense is on the field longer. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, listen to me. You got to get over that, Wes. We throwing the ball, bro. That's what I know that. Do. Listen to That's me. I do. know that. That's I know that. Listen to yeah. me. I know that. Yeah, I understand. Just, I know I, that. But what I'm saying, because you spoke to the philosophy of throwing the ball, I just want no, you to make sure you get over that. that no, like I listen to me. Keep it. Listen, listen <laughs> to me. I, Mr. Listen to me. I, West Coast. I don't have a run of damn ball have around here, but I, West Coast, believe that your most talented team is Dak Prescott to CD Lamb. We're going to throw the ball to more this year because it's your best option but i'm saying this if throwing the ball is my best option why would i support getting rid of the guy who was number two on my team in touchdowns who said get rid of him that's what he said that's what he landlord no, he, he want to add another wide receiver i want oh, yeah, listen to me. i'm okay I with want, that yeah. I'm, if brandon cooks is my number three i'm okay with that I okay, want him that. to be. I want him to be the a niggas dope ass see, number three. The niggas, that's see, a, see, uh, niggas be on, be on, be on the same accord the whole time. Don't you know? <laughs> yeah, that's how. Look, look, look. I just told you. I thought I said it as best as I could. All I said was, with the with the wide receiver core we got right now, it's a formidable. It's a good wide receiver core. We're good. But if you add one of the guys that I want to add, you might be going to brag to people. Like, listen, bro, do you see what we got? Like, I'm telling you, it's going to turn us up away ball, a whole and nother I, notch, bro. And I want to make stupid get the ball, bro. And, I want, and I want to make stupid smart. If he's going to go out here and throw the ball and ask him to throw the ball 40 times, I want him to have good options when he throws the football. You better have a good again. offensive Man, line, bro. You better have a good left line. tackle. What are you talking you gotta, about? You got to bring that one back, You got to bring that one back. You want to do what now? I want to make stupid smart. If we're going to go out here and throw the football, and Wes is right, like he's going to have to have some protection to yes. drop back and throw the ball like that. But if you're going to be hell bent on throwing the ball all around the yard, you need a bunch of good receiving threats. You're going to need CD Lamb. You need Brandon Cooks. You're probably going to need another wide out if Jalen Tolbert ain't ready to step up. And then you got Jake Ferguson. So, what you know. What we're doing is, Wes, I feel like we trying to protect ourselves from ourselves, bro. We know. Listen, I don't think we should just throw the ball all around the park. But either. that's what we're going to do. Listen, so I know. And do, I know that. And yeah, I, I know. That. I know. We, we got it understood that you know. But if look, that what we saying. If we know that's what we're gonna do, we are gonna load it up and make it as easy as possible. Try to make it as successful as possible. Throw us some wide receivers in there, then get us another wide receiver and just go crazy. Then and, okay, and, so then my so thing is this: point, if that's the case, then if that's the case, then stop talking about Brandon Cooks and talk more about the number two receiver. Because and I'm gonna tell you this right now: even if you bump Brandon Cooks to number three, you can't explain to me how he's not the third best receiver in the NFL. 
If you have Brandon Cooks as your number three receiver, explain to me how that's not good. Yeah, it's great. It's great. That's why I said we're going to be bragging. That's yeah, why no, we bragging not to, now. Nobody not to Brandon Cooks. I'm just that's saying. why we calling people like, boy, do you see what we finna do to y'all? That's why we bragging. Yeah, on. but because man, but, listen, but, listen, but, but I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all this, I'm gonna tell y'all this right here though. And don't get mad at me, but all that sh don't mean I'm nothing. I'm already mad. I'm already mad. Listen to me. <laughs> all that don't mean nothing though. You want to know why? Because that's not how you win in the playoffs. So guess what? You're going to build a team that's going to get you 12 wins, and you're going to meet the San Francisco 49ers. It's going to be time to run the ball, and your ass is going to get sit on. I'm that's, get probably what, that's probably what's going to happen anyway. But that's all we say, because <laughs> you got to think about it. We don't want it to be this way, but that's the way that Mike McCarthy runs his team, and that's the way he feel like he can win. So, like, look, even in Super Bowl year, he had receivers galore, and they cooked all of them. They went crazy. Also had I'm saying he had multiple receivers though, and they all was effective, and that offense was a a well oiled machine. That's the way he feel like he can play. You see and, what I'm saying? And this and this is the thing. I know we need a, a run game for the postseason, but I don't really see our options. There, there's what there's not a first round pick, game changing franchise running back in this draft. There's some guy that can come in and be good. But uh, we had to first, first and foremost, we had to see by getting them, getting them on the team. Secondly, we got to have to see if he changes his philosophy when it gets time to the postseason. I just know because, and listen, we talk about the postseason, it's not even guaranteed that we make it that far with the way that shit that shit's standing. So that's why I'm trying to at least get to the postseason first and then we can pivot and hopefully have a decent run game at, at that point. But dog. I just feel like it's, it's a proactive thing to do by adding a wide receiver. I don't even—I I don't even have to add one in the first round no more because I, I, I got sold on, on a couple more guys. If you yeah. want to go offensive line and protect Dak Prescott first round, get a left tackle and put him beside Back. Tyler Smith, I'm fine with that. But round mad. two, but round two, round three, I need to come out with with Jerry Rice's son. I need to come out with Xavier Leggett. I need to come out with Devon somebody. Baker, one yeah. of them guys. I need to come out with one of those wide receivers that I feel and listen. The Dallas Cowboys, are they proactive with contracts and re-signing veteran players and shit like that? Or are they pro Brandon Cook's a free agent after this year? So I need to go ahead. You need to be grooming, you need to be grooming a number two anyway. I need I need to go ahead and get somebody in here to still learn for Brandon Cook while he's still here. Dude, look, then think about this, Wes. I think that'll get you right though. That'll get you closer listen, to our side. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I forget I'm my already point. On your side. No, okay, okay. Listen, think about this. Even if you don't want a wide receiver right now, you I know you would like us to groom him. You don't want us to be like, okay, Brandon Cooks is gone. Now we got to replace him with a rookie. Bruh, that's, listen that's to me. Goofiness. I am – listen to me. I – because you had two arguments here. Just a couple weeks ago, we was out here, and we were debating Brandon Cooks in his utilization. Then we went to the Dallas Cowboys adding another receiver. I have never – I agreed on actually drafting a wide receiver when Tyron Smith was still almost possibly that we could re-sign him two weeks ago. I said, yeah, y'all got me on that. Yeah. But as things change, I change. Me too. And listen, I, I am okay with adding a receiver to this, this team. I've already said that the best asset for this team right now is going to be Dak Prescott throwing the ball. Why? Because that's the best thing. But I'm also saying this. I don't know how we even connected – my my stance has always been I want Brandon Cooks on his team because even if at a three at a receiver he's a better receiver than Jordan um, than Tober and if you look on every team in the NFL right now he's still a better three and if you're gonna throw the ball to three receivers C D Lamb one of these kids y'all want to draft and Brandon Cooks sounds like pretty damn good to me and we're all in agreement that's it Great. and listen nobody talk about getting rid of Brandon Cooks anyway he's on the contract yeah no he nobody, was nobody. he was I, was I ain't say get rid of him. Don't try to do I that. Said, he, I said he was treat him like he don't exist. That's a he big, was. That's a difference. <laughs> Shit. I just want to drop a wide receiver, bro. That's he all. was. That's he all. know he was too. That's the only thing I was offended. <laughs> he know he was. I didn't say that. Y'all so damn crazy. on air. I ain't saying that. And then he refuses. <laughs> re then he refuses to, to, to tell me Brandon Cooks is targets by game. All of a sudden, his internet that looks up everything just don't work. I'm just, no, I'm I, I already got it pulled up. <laughs> so what is it? Is? So read out Brandon Cooks targets. Wait a minute. Read out Brandon Cooks targets. These are only jokes. 
because I'm playing. I'm playing to the hand that y'all think I hate Brandon Cooks. Okay, don't take this seriously. You just hate that nigga. I'm just joking. No, 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 I don't. Yeah. I mean, what you read told me. out his targets <laughs> for Selm. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So hold on. So week one. Say week, week one, one. Week one for poor baby. Hold on. Look at that granddad. Yeah. I... <laughs> Look at that grandma. Oh, you scared him. Okay. This is my youngest grandbaby. But uh yeah, four on the se- September the 10th. You know, that's when we beat the shit out of the New York Giants. He missed some time. He came back against Arizona on September the 24th. He had seven targets. Uh four targets against New England, four targets against the San Francisco 49ers, four targets against the Chargers. Four targets against the Rams, two against Philly, ten against the Giants, four against Carolina, five against Washington, four against Seattle, five against Philly, six against Buffalo. Let me keep, let me go roll this up. All right. Uh, you also two, notice the two the two games we had his biggest targets or the, his two biggest games or what the two games we had his most targets. Coincidence. And there was some eight. terrible competition at the same time. So I mean, we'll, you have, can't, we'll have to figure out what happened. Eight, was, eight, hold on. Eight against Detroit and eight against Washington. What do you do that Detroit guy? With uh, eight six, 60 yards and a touchdown. That's decent. For yeah, a number two? What are you expecting for a number two? What do you what is he, he, See, he, we was talking about the 10 target games. One could draw two at one. Listen, one can draw two conclusions from that. You said he got high production because he got 10 targets. I can say he got high production because he played the Giants. I mean, it depends on what you want, how you want to feel, bro. Like, that's the same. So then you can say that about CeeDee Lamb every week, then. Then you got to use that same conversation about CeeDee Lamb every week. They say the same thing about that. Okay. They say he's terrible because he balled out against Washington. Or the Giants. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. You you can't control a target, man. Like, you can't control a target. You can't control if Dak doesn't throw the ball at you. Like, that doesn't make any sense at all. I can see him. I can see if we were talking about drops. And let's just be real. Dak, you don't have to be open to throw the ball. There are routes where you literally aren't open to you catch the ball. Like, you're not throwing the ball to an open receiver on a slant route. A slant route, you're running into a collision. You're running into the football. So you won't even think about if he's being open or not. He's either going to be open or the ball's going in the dirt. So that's what I'm saying. Like this whole narrative, people be saying, that's seven-on-seven football. In seven-on-seven, you throw the ball to wide-open receivers. Bro, in the NFL, there's in the NFL, there's probably never wide-open receivers unless someone fell down or they call a cover-three coverage and they have a they run in a, a cover-three defense that's going to attack one of them sides or they're in cover-two. And they don't. They have a. They let a wide receiver slot split the damn safeties. Then it's only time where you're gonna have a wide receiver. Think about this. Des Bryant was great because what? Contested catches. Like, bro, you don't even really get the, the the like. If you can get a yard, listen. If you're getting two yards of separation in the NFL, you're probably an All Pro. Two yards. That's this much. That's a lot for the, for the NFL. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. The average receiver is not getting open in the NFL. That's not how it works. You know what I'm saying? That's not how it works in the NFL. Like, like I said, like that's what we said. We feel like he need bigger receiving targets as well, though, because if you're not getting separation, we still need you to have an advantage. Brandon Cooks is an average size. Average Brad, he, didn't, he didn't show that in the end zone. In the red zone, he didn't show that. Show in the red zone, he looked. Uh, he looked very. And I'm gonna tell you, in the red he zone, he was not contested catches. He did contested catches. And 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 this thing about this, Brandon Cooks is a dude that has had six consecutive thousand yards until he did what? Until he played for the Dallas Cowboys. No, he did not have a thousand he, yards. Well, last year before that. Okay, year before that. Yeah, that, that, that actually, a, well, that actually a couple of times he had, didn't have a thousand yards, but he got a bunch of thousand yard seasons. I know what you're getting at. Yeah, I mean, it could be father time catching up. But all I say this, I say this, I just want to see him with other receivers and just boost it up. You know what I'm saying? I would love for Dak to have a running game to to, to lean on, but I just don't. You know, I don't know no, if we're gonna use office. it. 
Yeah. Excuse me. I don't know if we're going to use it. So, I mean, why you got all this ammo if you ain't shooting? That's all I'm saying. Because you can only shoot one gun at a time? Shit, I, I, got, I got two, two hands. I mean, Rambo does this. Uh, <laughs> I got, I got the barrels hands. are always pointed up, and it always looks like he's shooting at the sky to me. You know what I'm saying? I, I count, I hands. count six shots, nigga. Yeah, I, I, I you got, yeah, guns. but you only got one, and you got to pull each one individually. And you got to pull each one individually. Says the United States law. Yeah, you mean. At yeah, most, you can get we, three we rounds. We got switches out here, man. What you talking about? We got switches out here, man. Not we. Not me. Oh, just, oh, hold on. Oh, man. yeah. Hey, why do you think me, I man. bailed out of that one? Like, not me, but, you know, people Damn. have switches out here. They have switches. We ain't got nothing. We, we, ain't, got, we ain't got nothing in this house but Bible. Hey, we are podcasters. Hey. I got nothing but podcast <laughs> material. Hey, I got a phone and a dream. That's all I have hey, over here. Cowboys t shirts. That's it. <laughs> but man, <laughs> I gotta get ready to get up out of here. Probably try to eat some food before I, you know, croak. But uh, I enjoyed this, man. You know, it's been a minute since we did a show. I think we gave the people what they needed to hear today. Yeah, I agree. We've been on here an hour and forty minutes. So I, I with being on here an hour and forty minutes, I ain't gotta make no excuse. I'm ready to go. You already know what it is. Never look down, cause stars up. Peace. Peace.